I would like to show you certainly one of the most beautiful objects ever made by human beings. And it's in my pocket. It might be also in your pocket. So let me show you. It's this. This is an hand axe, and it is 100,000 years old, at least. It is an object that has shaped societies. It has been adapted to its environment, and it is the result of iterations to design it. This object is the symbol of what we are going to try to go through in this presentation, which is the fact that certain objects can change societies, and the societies are adapting to the object in which they are made for. The, this is the hand axe iteration, and it started by changing at some points, and it follows a certain, a certain uh, trajectory, and it ends up being adapted to its own environment. The people who have been using those hand axes are now almost disappeared. These were gatherer, hunter gatherers. And those societies have been living in, in our planet for most of the time, much more than our modern societies. And these groups had certain particularities. The main particularity is that they were working somehow two, uh, three to four hours a day, compared to us, who are working more than 10 hours, sometimes more. The other element that is very important is that they were changing their territory very regularly compared to us who are sedentary and who are using the, 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 the resources of our territory. And finally, the main thing that they were doing is that they were having minimum possessions. They were not accumulating. And they were doing that, for the, they were constructing things for the common good. And this is something very important. There was a common contribution to what they were doing. Now we are going to jump in time again and go to some place that is more familiar to you. It's in Siena, 1338. Lorenzetti painted an ideal government. This painting, which is in the, the Palazzo Comunale of Siena, is divided in two parts. A part that is considered a beautiful government, which is on the, on the right side, and a part that is the consequence of bad government, which is the war. What is also very important in the center of the painting which is describing what is the good government, it's, there is a rope that goes from the redistribution to the people and then up to the power. And this link is very important. So I had, if I can say it, the chance to be on that side. I went to Afghanistan, and I've lived there for 10 years. When I was in Afghanistan, I arrived in a country which suffered 40 years of war, continuous war. The, after September 11, we have tried to, there's been a, a massive intervention with a lot of money spent. The, almost the equivalent of the Marshall Plan has been spent in Afghanistan. The other element that we could see is that the effect of that spending has not been what we were thinking. A lot of corruption, a lot, lot of inefficiency in the aid made the result of these expenditures, this effort to reconstruct the country, useless. So there was something wrong, and we needed to find what it is. So with a friend, we founded an organization called Integrity Watch. This organization helped and tried to solve this problem. We, at Integrity Watch, tried to observe what was left from the war. What was left from the war was two main elements. First, it was still possible to use the concept of social accountability. The fact that societies, when you have a public good, the societies are able to organize at the local level, and they're able to hold themselves accountable. Each individual in a society, in a small group, can be held accountable one to the other. The second is the fact that citizens like you, like me, and it's the same in Afghanistan, are ready to share their contributions to the public space, to the common space, and you can use that to rebuild the society. The other element, that was also very important, and that was available at the time. This was in 2007. It was, you could collect elements from 
the reconstruction elements that were done, buildings and other things, using cameras, using uh, questionnaires, and communicating them. And now I'm going to explain you how you can use these elements as weapon of mass accountability. How can you reconstruct a more efficient country using those elements? And what we did is that we went to a, a, a countryside in a small village. In that village, we gathered the population of the village. And we said, you, you can choose a, a project that is important for you. And you elect three monitors, people that are going to watch that the project is actually constructed correctly. They started to do that. So they went, they took pictures, they used those weapons of mass accountability to collect evidences about the quality of the construction, about the comparison between the contracts that was given to them and the, the realization of those infrastructure. And they found that there was huge differences. So they started to claim and to say, look, we have differences, we have a problem. And they started to, to protest. But very quickly, they realized that there was a problem because they had all the proofs that things were not working, but they couldn't change it. So with a friend, uh, a journalist, I told her, I explained her the story. And at the time, it was a school done by UNICEF. And many of you in Europe are giving money at Christmas for UNICEF. But then the result on the ground is not always as good as you think. So this journalist went to that school and took some pictures, took the interview of the children and of the people, and realized that there was effectively a big problem. But what she did is that this uh, transmission went live in France at 8 o'clock in the morning. And at that point, UNICEF France called UNICEF Afghanistan and told them, look, you better move to that school and check what is happening there and resolve it. And at that point, we avoided a frustration from the people who were doing their job to monitor, but who were not getting the response. And the, the people, those villagers who did their job in the community and the commons, they realized that it was possible to actually change things by exerting pressure, exerting their civic rights. And the result of that has been this type of things. Projects that were problematic have been solved. And we did that over more than 1,300 projects. We've trained thousands of local monitors across the country in places where you have Taliban, in places that are more or less calm. And the result also has been that this project of monitoring has been able to, to be adapted to other domains than just the infrastructure. We applied it to the trials, justice. We applied it to extractive industry, mining. And we applied it to social services. And with that, we gave, again, a role to the population. Things that the government couldn't do, people could do. Now, I'm back from Afghanistan, and I, I learned one thing in Afghanistan, that people can change the world. They can change their environment. But there was something new, and I'm French, I'm Italian, but I'm French, and I thought, okay, now we have something new compared to that period. It's this, and I'm sure you have it in your pocket. It's the mobile phone. And the mobile phones, this is a tool that you're using every day. You're using it for emails, for Facebook, for Twitter, for other things. But do you think you really use it for civic purposes? This tool is an extremely powerful tool for civic purposes. And this is the base of what we call now a movement that is being developed, which is called civic tech. And with a lawyer and a developer, we have developed an application called VoxMap that is trying to recreate the link between citizens and the governments, the collectivities, where citizens make contributions. Those contributions are sent to the collectivities which can analyze them, and they can find solutions based on population's input. Now, there is a problem with that, is that our governments are not necessarily able to receive those informations. So you have what you had in Afghanistan, the same thing, a frustration is coming up. Because you send your contributions, but if they don't reach the government that is applying them, you cannot change things. It's problematic. But today, there is a possibility to actually make the administration change, evolve, and adapt to those new informations that every one of you can send to their administration. 
there is a possibility and there is one rule that needs to be applied in order to make sure that civic tech is actually resulting in something good. There is an iteration like the Silex, which is coming from every one of you to define what is beautiful. And there is another element, is that you should feel that you're making a change. If you don't feel that, you will stop using it. And in order to feel that, you need to also have new rules and new government, new administrative elements that are going to come into applications. Now, we are living in an environment where we are actually living in too many virtual spaces. One is the virtual space created by Facebook and all your connections. Another one is a public space that is created by Twitter and all the tweets that you read. They, popul they populate your environment. VoxMap is another one. But for this, you need to create really new, new rules and new institutions to be able to digest all this information. It's dense and it's there. Now, we are going out from a society that was governed by capitalism or neo-capitalism, where money was very important. The emergence of those type of uh, tools like Facebook and, and Twitter are still, or Google, are still on the neo-capitalist type of part where there is a, a, a look to accumulate not necessarily only money, but data. And they are not sharing the data that they have, those big companies. They are keeping them because that's their treasure. And then they can share that treasure for money. In front of that, you have other movements like Wikipedia, like VoxMap, like others, that are trying to open the data, where the value, the core value to move things is not money, it's commons. And the value that you will have is a, a, a redistributive value. You try to make sure that people are redistributing their, their contributions. And this is going to move. And this is going to create a form of ideal beauty. Now, if you go a bit further, you, know, you all know that there is artificial intelligence coming up. It's there. It's existing. You can apply artificial intelligence to governments. With all your inputs, the artificial intelligence is able to actually absorb those data and use them. So our work will change. We will certainly, if you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, if you have those professions, artificial intelligence is coming up and is potentially replacing you. And potentially, I mean in the next maybe 10 years. So what will be our next job, our next work? It will certainly be to contribute to the commons. This is going to be the next work that us as living humans in a certain environment can do. We are going to use the combination of commons plus technology to actually change our world. And this is certainly the, the job of the, the future, where we will certainly work, hopefully, less, but for the commons. Thank you.